Right, good evening, everyone. I've got a couple of minutes after six, so we'll go ahead and call to order our regular session of September 6, 2016. First item that we have on the agenda is the opening prayer and pledges of allegiance to the flags of the United States and the state of Texas. Councilmember John will lead us in the opening prayer. If you'll please join me in standing. <clears throat> Almighty God, we are gathered here today to serve you and further the work of our great city. Give us the knowledge and the strength to do your will with a proper balance of our present needs, long-range plans, and eternal values. Guide us to accept our responsibilities and act with the wisdom and courage considering the good of all. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Mr. John. Next item that we have on the agenda this evening are city events and announcements. And first, we have announcements of upcoming city events. Who has the duty? Everybody's pointing to each other. Oh, I Mr. James, tonight. okay. Yes. Just a reminder, this coming Thursday, September 8th, is the Northeast Partnership Meeting. That's at Olympia Hills Golf and Conference Center at 1130. Uh, Friday and Saturday, September 16th and 17th is Shirts Fest. You can go to the visitshirts.com website for more information. Uh, Tuesday, September 20th is the Chamber Lunch, and if Council's planning to go, you can RSVP to the City Secretary by the 13th uh, so she can get you listed in there. Saturday, October 1st, uh, we have Rods, Hogs, and Dogs at Pickerel Park from 5 p.m. To, to 9 p.m. Uh, that's uh, Shirts Parks and Recreation Department and the Public Affairs Department. It's the second of the Concerts in the Park series that we're doing. That's free for folks. Come out and have a good time. The fall cleanup is October 1st through the 16th. And then Tuesday, October 4th, uh, we don't anticipate having a council meeting, though we have to cancel that, uh, due to National Night Out. So Tuesday, October 4th is National Night Out. A few election reminders. The last day to register to vote is Tuesday, October 11th. First day of early voting is Monday, October 24th. The last day of early voting is Friday, November 4th. And then Election Day, Tuesday, November 8th. All right, thank you, sir. Next item we have on the agenda are announcements and recognitions by the city manager, Mr. Kessel. Mr. Kessel. Very good. We'll move on from there. The next item we have are new employee recognitions, and we'll start off this evening with the fire department. Chief. First he says get up and then says I'll call you. Welcome. <laughs> you, you saw that, huh? Okay, hurry up and wait right there. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you for allowing me a little bit of time here. I'd like to introduce our three firefighters that we've hired. Uh, they're undergoing their probationary period right now and their training. So, loud. And uh, first I'd like to introduce to you Donald Skabinski. Donald, if you and your family would come up. Donald grew up on a cattle ranch in Laredo, Texas. He, uh, he learned there that hunting and fishing were excellent rewards for a, a hard day's work. Uh, he then moved to Corpus Christi where he finished high school and began volunteering and later scuba diving for the Texas State Aquarium. He met his wonderful wife, Jessica, there. And, uh, after she finished her master's degree in graphic design, he, they moved to San Antonio to be closer to family. They have some acreage that they bought uh, nearby, and they plan on being around for a while. He said he always knew he wanted to do something to help out his community. The city of Shirts has given me the opportunity to fulfill that dream, and he plans to give his all to Shirts Fire Department. So we'd like you to welcome Donald Skabinski. Donald, welcome. Jessica, if you wouldn't mind stabbing it, I mean, placing that. You don't have to clasp it, just kind of hook it in there. Congratulations, Donald. There you go. Welcome. By the way, I give everybody a chance at the microphone if they want it. You can, you can decline, and there's nothing wrong with it, but if you want a time at the microphone, you can have it right now. Just want to say thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Look forward to you having a long career with us. Appreciate it. Now, 
Thank you, Donald. Next up, I have Sawyer Marks. Sawyer, if you have any family coming up. Sawyer was born in Austin and raised in Johnson City. Uh, after he graduated from LBJ High School there, he uh, joined the Johnson City Volunteer Fire Department. He was with them for four years, still does time there. He went to college at Austin Community College, and he got his EMT over at Oak Hills Fire Department. He worked as a mechanic and a heavy equipment operator, and he loves to go hunting and fishing. I think we have a theme going here. Tyler said, uh, or Sawyer says he worked hard to get here, and he's proud to say that now he works for the Shirts Fire Department. So please join me in welcoming Sawyer Marks. Oh, yeah. Same opportunity. You can have a shot at the microphone if you want it. It's up to you. It's very fine. There's no problem with declining. Just want to make sure I give the opportunity. Thank you. Very good. Well, so I know Tyler will make up for all of that with a little bit of speaking. So next, I'd like to introduce Tyler Winka. Uh, Tyler was born in San Antonio, moved to the great city of Shirts when he was nine years old. And I guess he attended the greatest high school in the state of Texas. Samuel Clemens, of course. All right. So uh, he, he lettered in football there for a number of years and attended Eastern New Mexico University on athletic scholarship playing football. Uh, Shirts Fire Department is his first firefighting job, and he plans on being here for a while. It's, he says it's an honor for him to be a firefighter in his hometown. I think that's important and serve his community. He loves football, he loves the Cowboys and the Spurs. Two out of three is not bad. In my spare time, and he enjoys hunting and hanging out with friends. So please join me in welcoming Tyler Winka. Last, he's going to try to follow suit. He's got the last 21 years. I gave, I gave 21 years to the fire service. All right. Congratulations, Tyler. Proud of you. Well done. All right. And, and, and shout out the microphone. Ahead, Tyler, oh, you good. get the you. Sure. The opportunity. Thank you. Very good. Please do. Hey, Chuck, hold on a second. Hey, Council, why don't you stand up back here behind me? Come on.
right, next on the list this evening, we have um, another new employee recognition, this time from the IT department. Miles, will you be leading us? All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, tonight, I'd like to introduce to you Kent David. Kent is a uh, born and raised in Dallas. He now lives in San Antonio. Uh, Kent is our senior systems administrator, uh, filled a position that was vacated uh, last June, this June. A um, couple of highlights of him, he is, alas, an Aggie. Uh, we promise not to hold that against him. Uh, we will achieve a balance of power with our next hire, hopefully. We're specifically recruiting UT at this point. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, grew up in the Lake Highlands area of Dallas. Uh, he was on the swim team, worked in many different jobs. He worked in an oil, oil field platform, a grocery store, a seafood butcher. Okay, well this has to be a step up, without a doubt. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and a waiter is a bartender. It's open so mic night, by the way. It's open mic. So, uh, so as a bartender, he certainly would be used to listening to our customers and their problems. <laughs> uh, he has a family. He has a wife, Lori. Uh, son, Brandon, is 12 years old. Uh, daughter, Lauren, is 9, and a pet boxer named Copper. Hobbies are reading, spending time with his family, camping on the beach, and running, apparently. Uh, loves their study and research World War II history, uh, particularly Pacific Theater. Uh, would like to welcome Kent David. Welcome, Kent. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Oh, well, welcome. We hope you have a long time that you spend here with us. We don't have anything to pin on him at the moment. That will come later at the, the hearings, so. though. <laughs> Leave it to the IT department to bring forth the humor. All right. Next up this evening, we have Public Works. Good evening, Mayor, Council, evening, Mr. Gentlemen. Kessler. Tonight I want to introduce you to a new employee in our public works department. This is Nathan DeHaven. He's, Got him. <laughs> he's starting his, uh, in our drainage department as a worker one. Uh, Nathan started on uh, August 22nd of this year, so he's been here right at three weeks now, or starting his third week. Before his employment with the City of Shirts, Nathan worked uh, for Halliburton for the last two years. Uh, worked as a fracker in the oil industry in South Texas. Um, Nathan has a son named Luke, a year, year and a half old, and he loves to spend time with him. And I'm going to stay with Chief's theme. Nathan loves, his hobbies are hunting, fishing, working out, and having fun with his friends and family. Very good. Well, welcome. Welcome. Shout at the microphone, too, if you like. You're going to pass? All good. Glad to have you with us. All right, next up we have some employee recognition. We have recognition of 20 years of service. Mr. Kessel, I'll turn it to you, sir. Indeed. Mayor, Council, uh, today we have a 20-year pin. Uh, as you know, when we do these service awards pins, we try to make them a little bit more formal uh, to recognize. Let me move that away a little bit to recognize the uh, the contributions that our, our staff who've been here the longest uh, have made. And tonight we're recognizing Jim Bush, and Jim is in the back. I'm going to ask him to come forward now. And everybody was giving him a hard time because he's all cleaned up and in his dress blues, but he looks outstanding. So welcome, Jim. So I visited a little bit with Jim uh, before and learned a, a, a number of things about him. And the vast majority of stories that he told, I chose not to put into this uh, discussion. Um, and is that a, that's a fair and accurate, probably, uh, we agreed that would probably be best. So Jim started in the EMS department in 1996. Those of you who can do math understand that that's why we're giving him a 20 year pin. Uh, what you may not know is that he, before that, worked 10 years at Universal City as a firefighter uh, and paramedic. 
and then before that was at Randolph Air Force Base. Um, and uh, Jim is currently our second longest serving EMS employee. Uh, so uh, certainly he's been here since the, the very early days and was a tremendous asset to us. Um, his supervisor, our coworker, Matt Troncosio, is in the back as well. Uh, he is the longest serving, so we have uh, quite, a, quite a large number of years between the two of them here. Um, Jim is originally a Florida native, and uh, I think he grew up in the Miami area, and then he joined the Air Force, and we asked him why he joined the Air Force. And he had this sort of roundabout story where he said, well, you know, I wanted to be a paramedic. And the best way to become a paramedic is to become a fireman. And then, so I wanted to become a fireman, so the best way to become a fireman is to join the military. And so he joined the Air Force so that he could be a fireman, so that he could be a paramedic. And that's what brought him uh, to San Antonio where he met uh, his wife, Sandra. And is Sandra here? Sandra? And also, uh, they have, do you have both, both your kids here? So James Jr. Uh, and Catherine. Thanks. Come on up. So it's, it's fantastic uh, to be able to honor uh, your husband and your dad uh, with you here. Thank you for, for taking the time out of your day to come down. So, Mr. Bush, uh, Mr. Bush Jim uh, works over at Station 4, which is in Marion, uh, and we asked him a lot of stories again. I'll, I'll just say that many of them probably are not, are not what we'd want to share. Uh, the one that is, uh, sticks out of my mind, though, is, is that he has not only helped people uh, who've injured themselves or had a heart attack or these things, but he's also uh, delivered a baby. And so when you're not only helping people on a bad day, but you're also helping somebody on their very first day, that, that's an amazing thing. Uh, and when we, when we asked him why he did um, what he did, what, what is it that, that motivates him, uh, he said that saving someone's life and making a difference is incredibly satisfying. And so for that, we thank you so much. Um, we, because Matt has probably known you the longest of any coworker, uh, we asked him if he could say a few words. I'm going to read these, which means I need to put on my glasses, so I apologize about that. Uh, but what Matt said is, it's been an honor working with Jim for the past 20 years. I can always depend on him to be here on time and to complete his duties as assigned. He takes great pride in his role as a paramedic and continues to grow in his field. His co-workers have the utmost respect for him, as do I. Thank you for your 20 years of service and for the years of service in the other communities uh, prior. Uh, it's truly awesome, and I appreciate you very much, Jim. Congratulations. Up you go, guys. He says he has laryngitis, so I'm going to move away from the microphone because Jim, they, they do want to hear a few words from you. It's just been a privilege and a, and a pleasure working here. Uh, I wish I could say another 20 years would be great, but by then I'll be in my 70s. Um, okay. It's been a blast. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. This is what you came here for, but Lou doesn't put on the bottom and how many of them separate. Well, we were going to talk to you about that, you know, if you need to get your replacement one or anything like that. That's fine. <laughs> how, about hidden away. how about the 10? I've got 10 15. and 15. I've those, no problem, but I just couldn't find five. I think the council wants to get a picture with, with you and the family and... Ruth. 
Do you want us on the right or the left? Uh, let's do it on the right. All right. It's always tempting after one of those to end the meeting, but we have a little, a little business to attend to. So um, the next thing that we have on the agenda this evening is a proclamation, and it's recognizing National Payroll Week. And I'll invite uh, um, members of the Alamo Chapter American Payroll Association and the Shirts Finance Department to join me down here at the podium. I'll be right there. So this this is um they made they made the letters big enough where I don't need my glasses like John. So I'm gonna read the whole thing. So this is a proclamation from here in the city of Shirts with regards to the National Payroll Week. And it's uh it's entitled Getting Paid in America, which is kind of the reason that we go to work for so many years and um why in the uh in the original declaration there was commentary made about we are endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights, and among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of property. And they changed it to happiness, but property was first, and this was part of that equation. And it reads, whereas the American Payroll Association and its 21,000 members have launched a nationwide public awareness campaign that pays tribute to the more than 156 million people who work in the United States, and the payroll professionals who support the American system by paying wages, reporting worker earnings, and withholding federal employment taxes, and whereas payroll professionals in Shirts, Texas play a key role in maintaining the economic health of Shirts, performing such diverse tasks as paying into the unemployment insurance system, providing data for child support enforcement, and carrying out tax withholding, reporting, and depositing, and whereas payroll departments collectively spend more than $15 billion annually complying with myriad federal and state wage and tax laws, and whereas payroll professionals play an increasingly important role ensuring the economic security of American families by helping to identify non-custodial parents and making sure they comply with their child support mandates, and whereas payroll professionals have become increasingly proactive in educating both the business community and the public about the payroll tax withholding systems, and whereas payroll professionals meet regularly with federal and state tax officials to discuss both improving compliance with government procedures and how compliance can be achieved at less cost to both government and businesses, 
Now, therefore, September 5th through 9th, 2016, has been proclaimed National Payroll Week, and I hereby give additional support to the efforts of the people working in Shirts, Texas, and the payroll profession by proclaiming the first full week of September Payroll Week for the city of Shirts, Texas. And I have a copy for you. And I have a copy. There we go. For you. And would any of you like to have a moment at the microphone? You're welcome to. No. No one? Well, thank you for the work that you do. I'm very glad to have you with us this evening. Thanks for joining us. Always. Okay, Chuck, you want us to come up front here? All right, as you wish. So we have the two proclamations in the middle. I'm learning from Chuck, by the way. I've been watching. There you go. Symmetry, sir. All right, the next item that we have on the agenda this evening is um, the hearing of residents. And first up this evening, uh, it's like Trey Wick Womack. 8519 Tuscan Hills, Garden Ridge, Texas. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mayor, Council, I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Yeah. Uh, over the last few months, I had the opportunity to come in and go through, listen to some planning and zoning meetings and also a city council meeting. I had a piece of property on 35. We were trying to get uh, rezoned. It didn't happen, which is which is fine. But in those meetings, I did learn a few things that, you know, I really didn't realize before, and that's that uh, I listened to some of the homeowners and I understood their reason. But from the school districts, city council, from y'all's planning and zoning, what y'all you know what y'all looking for the future is you know looking for more commercial, big box stores, restaurants, things like that to increase the tax revenue, which I can I can understand that. I own some other property in Shirts. I uh, had a business down on Door Lane. And when I was built, you know, bought it 20 years ago, there was two-lane road. Republic wasn't there. There was no FedEx or anything. You know, I deeded my four feet. Y'all came in and put city sewer in and, you know, made it very nice. And so you were able to get in FedEx, Caterpillar, you know, some other people down there, which is, which is good for the city. I totally understand on 35, you know, what, what, what the reasoning was and with the homeowners complaint, you know, didn't want the apartments. I don't agree with everything that was said, but, you know, that's, that's the way it is. The one thing I do want to bring up is that from hearing all the, what you're looking for, I do believe that somewhere along the lines, from 3009, y'all have nothing on 35. There is no commercial stuff. Now, when you get down to New Braunfels, you know, pick up in New Braunfels from Ruckel Road, they start and they have stuff on both sides of the road. And I heard the man from the school district talking about per head count, how much more money they brought in. But you only have the small area. I think that y'all ought to really think about doing something with the sewer and maybe it would help on the development on 35. Not just because I own a piece of property, but I guess my concern is I live in Garden Ridge. I know that 2252 is having road work done. And I've looked at the thoroughfares because, you know, that was brought up in my piece of property. And I've looked at, you know, what the planning is. The thing that upsets me is that I hear that the sewer, which I, you know, they took the sewer all the way down Door Lane, stops at the railroad tracks. From what I'm understanding is they're talking about taking sewer to the city of Garden Ridge for development on 2252. I think you ought to think about the people, you know, that your constituents here in shirts and on 35 before you start going that way. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, next to sign up is, uh, it just says Bennett. Is that you, sir? Welcome. You can pull that microphone down toward you if you like. Hi, my name is Bennett Burkhofer. I'm from 
Kanjo Moso of shirts. In the month of August, we had the belt test, the back school bash, and the great kick down for, 20, for 2016. We have two top kickers for the great kick down. One for the Teen Dopes program is Ryan Sobone. And for the Dragons program is Timothy Perry. This month we have the Home and Garden Show for the Alamo Jeff for the 30th and October 1st. Thank you. Very good. Before you leave, um, one of the tenets of your art is having an indomitable spirit, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I'll tell you what, standing up here in front of all of us and in this big space and talking and doing as well as you just did is reflective of having an indomitable, indomitable spirit. So well done. Thanks for coming and join us. Appreciate it. Very good. I have a few items of business. No one else has signed up to speak, so we'll move on to the few items of business that we have. Item number one, uh, minutes, consideration, or action regarding the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of August 30, 2016. Gentlemen, any comments or corrections to those minutes? If not, is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Fowler, a second from Mr. Thompson. Any other comments or questions from council? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 Five ayes, oh, sorry, four ayes and no nays. The motion carries. Next item that I have on the agenda this evening is item number two, ordinance 16, a T29, an ordinance adopting a budget for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2016 and ending September 30, 2017 in accordance with the charter of the City of Church, Texas, providing for the filing of, hold on, filing of the budget, providing that this ordinance shall be cumulative of all ordinances, providing a severability clause and providing an effective date. Very good. Very good. Yes, I was far, there, was some, there was a whole paragraph of instructions that followed, and I just had to read through those and make sure I did this correctly, but it's all yours, sir. Okay. Uh, Mayor, City Council, I'm here to introduce item number two, which is a final reading of our budget. Uh, we're finally there. What I'll do is I'll give you a, a brief uh, overview of uh, what's already been presented to you guys, so uh, if you'll bear with me. Uh, this is the, uh, the presentation we had of our budget, which was we presented three community presentations. We had a, in a budget workshop, which was a city council, a council chambers. We also had our two required public hearings, one being on August 23rd, the other one being on August the 30th. And to review our, our all the funds, uh, all the revenues in total are come out uh, come out to seven, 72 million point five. Of the 72.5 million, 39% is comprised of the general fund. Water and sewer is 28%. Uh, the INS is 9%, EMS is 13%. The expenses, the expenses we had 69.071 million. Of that, general fund uh, comprises uh, 41%. Water and sewer has 30%. INS 10% and EMS, of course, 13%. What that will get us is the three firefighters for station number three. They were approved on uh, August 2nd. Those will get us three police officers, two paramedics, one IT employee, and we're making a seasonal park, uh, parks worker a regular part time. Uh, the part-time, we're also making a part-time facilities uh, technician into a full-time person. A review of the general fund, uh, in revenues we had 28.524 million, uh, expenditures uh, at 28.516, that increased our fund balance to 8.151, gives us a beginning, balance, beginning fund balance of 9.295. Of that, we're going to take out 43,000. Uh, uh, that's to uh, for a vehicle replacement, and that leaves us with an ending balance of 9.259. Uh, as you'll as you'll know that uh, we have a reserve policy, which is 25 percent. The 25 percent is is 7.1 million dollars. 
And this is our five-year forecast, as you can see there in, uh, in year 2017, which is the upcoming budget year. You can see we're pulling out the 35,127, and that's, that's the vehicle. And also what we're really proud of is that very last line down there where it says over and under. As you can see, it, it's all positive. And that is it, the abbreviated uh, presentation of the, uh, of the budget. Very good. Gentlemen, um, this is the final reading. Anyone have any questions uh, before we call for a vote? Gentlemen? Mr. Zeus? Uh, Mr. Mayor, not a question. I just wanted to tell you and all the staff and everybody that participated in this budget and put it together. Very well done. I reviewed the whole packet that was given to me, but it's an excellent job, and we thank you for all the hard work. I'd like to make a motion to approve it, Mr. Mayor. And I have to pass down the official state legislature mandated language. <clears throat> oh, wait a second. That's for the next one. This one, I don't have That's language for it. Be. Hold on. Say that one for the next one. Sorry. Second. So I have a motion for Mr. Zeus to approve Ordinance 16-T29. I have a second for Mr. Thompson. Uh, any other comments or questions from Council? I'll echo Mr. Zeus's comments. Very well done. Thank you. Budget time is hard work for staff, the, all the departments, particularly finance, so we appreciate it. And so I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 Four ayes and no nays. The motion carries. And I uh, assume you have the next one as well, which is Ordinance 16T30, an ordinance approving the appraisal role, setting the tax rate, levying and assessing general and special ad valorem taxes for the use and support of the municipal government of the city of Schertz, Texas, apportioning the levies for specific purposes, providing a severability clause and providing an effective date. Okay. This is also the final reading of the tax rate. And so for our 2016-2017 proposed tax rate, as you can see, the effective tax rate uh, calculated at, at uh, 0 0.4803. The uh, rollback is at 0 0.5080. Uh, currently, we have a 0 0.4911. And the proposed is 0 0.4911, which is, uh, is the, the amount that the budget is balanced at. Uh, one cent is equal to 3.25598 in revenue or $20 on the average home bill. Very good. Council, any questions? I'm sorry, you're not quite finished yet. One more. I was getting ahead of myself. <laughs> this is a comparison uh, to uh, the current as to the proposed. Uh, on the uh, tax rate, the MNO, which is the uh, maintenance operation that pays for the day-to-day -day activities uh, uh, to run the city. Uh, currently, it's 3.59, and we're proposing uh, 0.3168, which is an increase of 0 0.0009. Uh, the a INS is what we need uh, to pay the, the, our debt. Currently, it's at 0.1752, and we are lowering it to 0.1743, which is a 0 0.0009, which is, is it's the same, uh, same tax rate. Point four nine one one. Also, at uh, point four nine one one, uh, the tax bill, the twenty fifteen tax bill, will get you uh, nine hundred thirteen dollars and forty five cents on an average home of one hundred eighty six thousand uh, dollars. Tax bill for twenty sixteen will be nine thirty four and thirty two cents on an average home value of one hundred ninety dollars, one hundred ninety thousand two hundred fifty dollars. As an increase of twenty dollars and eighty-seven cents. The uh, average uh, tax bill for a new resident will be uh, nine hundred eighty-two dollars and twenty cents on a home value that's valued at two hundred thousand. And this is a graph showing uh, the uh, the comparison of the tax rates. As you can see, the the middle middle portion of that, which is orange or yellow. <clears throat> and that is uh, the, the uh, school district tax rates. And uh, if you live in, in Bear County, you get to, to also contribute to the San Antonio River Authority, the University Health System, uh, and also to the college. And this is a, a snapshot, snapshot of the, uh, the budget calendar for year 2016. As you can see, we started August the 5th with the filing of the budget. And we'll end October the 1st with the, uh, when the budget goes into effect. That is it. Very good.
Council, questions? M Mr. Mayor, just as well, I'd like to thank the staff for this. And most importantly, though, I'd like to thank the taxpayers because they, without them, we could not achieve the goals we're achieving. So I thank us, I thank you all, and I thank everybody that's not present. Um, I'd like to approve this, uh, Mr. Mayor. Oh, I got to read this. Yeah. Okay. The state legislature makes us right. do it their I, way. <clears throat> I move the property taxes to be awarded by the adoption of a tax rate of 0 0.4911, which is effectively a 2.2% increase in the tax rate. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Zuz, a second from Mr. Fowler. Any other comments or questions from Council? I have to take the opportunity. We go back to slide 11 real quickly. I can find it. That's okay. If not, what's important there and what I want to point out is, is we, we, we've increased the amount. And granted, they're small, right? But we increased the amount that we're spending on, on M&O, maintenance and operation, and decreased the amount of the rate that, we're, that we have to have to maintain our debt position. That's in moving in the correct direction. Anytime that we're able to spend less money on maintaining our debt position, increase the amount of money that we spend on maintenance and operations, we have our financial house in order. If we start going the other direction, then we need to look at have we issued more bonds? Is there something we're doing differently or something we're doing wrong uh, that we are in that going in that direction, right? So a little more money being spent on M&O, a little less money being spent on debt service, just like we all try to do in our own households, which is a challenge for us, too. It's well done by staff. So thank you for that. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd also like to just comment on the last five years that, you know, our tax rate for the years one, two, and three, five years ago, were all the same. And then because of the... Uh, way that we have been doing business of putting together a five-year plan and talking about putting money aside to buy new vehicles and we said we don't even think about it we said all right we we did that and i just think that uh, not only did we do something that was kind of i thought unusual after those three years we lowered our tax rate but yet we've seen our uh, tax uh, that we, uh, our level, I can't even think of the word now, is went to a double A plus. Rating. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, this is, these are nothing but just good signs of good management across the board. And I think every, every department is beginning to really understand the benefit of everything that we've been doing and trying to do here for the last three years. And I just congratulate you guys for being able to open up your ears, being able to talk with each other of what was really needed and to try to figure out how to make this all happen. And I think as a team, we've done it. And I'm proud of you. Thank you very much. I think we all have have contributed to to where we are today. The staff, department heads, you know, you guys. It's it's all been a, a team effort. So, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I have a motion and a second. Anything else? And I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 Four ayes and no nays. The motion carries. Thank you again. Great thank work you. from the team. All right, the next item that we have on the agenda is roll call vote confirmation. Ms. Donna? Item number one, the minutes of the August 30th, 2016 City Council meeting. Motion was made by Council Member Fowler, seconded by Council Member Thompson. Council Members Fowler, Asus, John, and Thompson voted yes. Motion passed. Item number two, Final reading of Ordinance 16T29. Motion was made by Council Member Asus, seconded by Council Member Thompson. Council Members Fowler, Asus, John, and Thompson voted yes. Motion passed. Item number three, Ordinance number 16T30. Final reading 
Motion was made by Council Member Asus, seconded by Council Member Fowler. Council Members Fowler, Asus, John, and Thompson voted yes. Motion passed. Thank you, ma'am. Next item that we have on the agenda this evening, requests and announcements. And the first item is announcements by the city manager. I think further, Mr. Kessel? Well, you know I just can't help talking into the microphone. I didn't uh, make my normal announcements at the beginning uh, because uh, we were honoring one of our employees, Mr. Bush. Uh, I wanted to say thank you, though, to two employees and really probably a, a team of employees, but uh, Chuck Van Zant and Doug Letbetter uh, from Parks and from uh, Public Works. Uh, as, as Council knows, there's been a significant amount of rain, more so than we are used to in August, and so we've got a lot more weeds and grass than we're used to. We're used to seeing nothing growing in August, and so it's like spring all over again. And uh, those two and their crews have been systematically trying to get out ahead of things. Um, we're not there yet, uh, but they've worked very hard on Church Parkway, and they're actually working very hard on a TxDOT road, uh, 3009, FM 3009. Uh, they, with TxDOT's permission, as I understand it, uh, have hit 3009 with uh, herbicide for some of the growth that was on the curb and they're working their way along the length uh, to knock back some of the tall weeds and grass. Uh, and again, they're coordinating that with TxDOT, but they've already done Church Park. We hopefully you've seen a difference uh, on the overhead limbs and the, the side bushes uh, along the parkway. And so normally we don't have to do this. Our crews are a little bit uh, out, uh, outnumbered by the weeds uh, this August. Uh, and so they've, those two and their crews have really stepped up uh, a little bit extra. I just want to say thank you to that. Indeed. Thank you, sir. Uh, next item is item number five, future agenda, future agenda item request from the council. Gentlemen, anything that we need to have on a future agenda that we don't currently have scheduled? Mr. Thompson? Um, regarding TxDOT, um, I've had several citizens contact me about the light at Savannah in 3009 continually blinking this morning. It was backed up to Live Oak, and this, after, this evening backed up at HEB. Um, Savannah was blinking. They had a technician out there about 5.30, but it was blinking all day is what you're saying. One resident said it's been out about one out, one out, one out of every three days for the last few weeks. Thank you for that information. I have, um, I'm surprised nobody said that we should have on our next week's meeting a resolution to uh, a rather opposing rain on Shirts Fest weekend, but I guess we can probably pass that one out. And, well, we won't do that one. It sounds like a good idea, but I'm not sure that God will listen to us. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. Um, next item that we have is item number six, announcements by the mayor and council members. Uh, we'll start with um, Mr. Fowler. All right, Mr. Zeus, Mr. John, Mr. Thompson. Um, I don't have anything either, but we do have a need this evening to go into executive session. And so the city, uh, city council will meet in closed session under section 551.087 of the Texas Government Code, deliberation regarding economic development negotiations, closed meeting. Uh, and we, it says the governmental body is not required to conduct an open meeting to discuss or deliberate regarding commercial or financial information the governmental body has received from a business prospect the governmental body seeks to have locate, stay, or expand in or near the territory of the governmental body and with which the governmental body is conducting economic development negotiations or to deliberate the offer of a financial or other incentive to a business prospect. This is for project E-025. We're going to go uh, into executive session. We'll leave open session and come back as quickly as we are able. Thank you.
All right, we'll come back into open session at this time. Gentlemen, anything with regard to executive session on item 7A that we need to take any action upon? Oh, I don't think there's any. I don't think we have any. No action tonight. No action tonight. We're good to go. Um, there's no need for a roll call vote confirmation. We've gone through the rest of the agenda. If there's anything else from staff or from council? If not, then we stand adjourned.